So is there a way to tell how healthy, what the state of our mitochondria are? I mean, is there any metrics? Do we look at like phenotypic metrics like VO2 max or something like that? Are there any biomarkers? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, certainly, uh, there's many ways to look at mitochondrial function, depending on the you know the study or the outcome or the metric that you want. You know, for example, you can take a tissue biopsy, which we often do, and we can look at the total um, maximal uh, enzyme activity of the mitochondria. We can look at them under the microscope to see if they have normal structure uh, and structure and function are fairly uh, uh, tightly linked. But most people, you know, the average person on the street doesn't want to get a muscle biopsy to look at the mitochondria. But the best way to look at the whole body mitochondrial fitness is really, as you pointed out, the VO2 max. And what VO2 max is, is it's the maximal oxygen consumption. And the best way to measure this is put someone on a treadmill or a bike. Uh, we're essentially measuring the oxygen coming in and the carbon dioxide coming out. And uh, what we do is we increase the intensity or speed of the bike or the treadmill and bring somebody to their absolute maximal capacity. At that point, what we're looking at is essentially the difference between room air, which is 20.93% oxygen, and the oxygen coming out, and the total volume. So if you know the difference between oxygen in and out and the volume, you can get the oxygen that's consumed by that person per minute. And the metric we usually use is we divide that by your kilogram of body weight. And that's your VO2 peak or VO2 max. Essentially, they're pretty much synonymous. And what it's reflecting, as I pointed out earlier, all of that oxygen ultimately ends up at complex four of our mitochondria, where essentially the uh, oxygen is consumed and uh, we, get, uh, we get water uh, produced at complex four. And uh, so really, it's your mitochondria that are determining the total oxygen that's being consumed. And that's the best way of uh, really measuring it in somewhat. And what we do find, obviously, athletes, because of mitochondrial biogenesis, have higher VO2s. Uh, as we age, even with athletes, and we and others have published many papers on this, unfortunately, even with exercise, and we'll talk about how good it is for you, we still get a slow decline. However, in one of our studies in 2012, the VO2 max of older athletes, those over the age of 65, was higher than sedentary people in their 20s. So, um, you know, although it does decline because of mitochondrial dysfunction with age and other factors, and choose heart doesn't pump quite as well. Um, it's, it's probably our best metric. And uh, many other people have noted as well that your VO2 max uh, really does determine function. And uh, so for example, if your VO2 max is less than 12 um, milliliters of oxygen per kilogram per minute, uh, many people become institutionalized because you're so functionally impaired uh, that you just can't carry out your daily activities. And those with the higher VO2s tend to have the best health span and even the slightly longer lifespan. So the, I assume that the VO2 max is going to measure the mitochondria in your muscle. So do you, can different tissues have mitochondria which are healthy and unhealthy? Like, could you have unhealthy mitochondria in your brain and healthy in your muscle? That's a great question. Uh, generally, um, you know, looking at animal models, for example, we did a study where we uh, had mice uh, from age three months to two years of age who were able to run on a treadmill every night and other uh, mice uh, treadmill was locked so they couldn't run. And what we find is that the benefits of being healthy with respect to the mitochondria are present not just in the muscle, but also in the brain, the heart. Uh, and we've even uh, published that the skin mitochondria are healthier with, uh, uh, with exercise. So uh, long-term exercisers have much improved mitochondrial function in the skin. Now, the point that I will make there relates to another point that you're pointing out, and that is that we did the biopsy from a non-sun exposed area. And the reason why we did that is that if you look at my face, and I've got friends who are you know, world-class cyclists, uh, we're out in the sun a lot more than a sedentary person. So you get secondary damage from the sun, which damages the mitochondria. Um, and so you can sort of mask the benefits by looking at someone's face or biopsying their face because you've got 50 times, let's say, more exposure to the UV radiation, which is causing damage. But if we didn't get that protection, it probably would be that much worse. So when we biopsy a non-sun exposed area, we do see the uh, benefits in a multi-systemic fashion to mitochondria throughout the body. However, if we were to biopsy the skin on the face through a um, sort of um, 
an, an epigenetic uh, process, uh, meaning you know something that's not genetically regulated, and that's the sun UV radiation that uh, sort of masks the benefit that we're seeing. So for example, you could be a super fit athlete and have good mitochondria in your muscle, but if you had multiple head injuries or you were genetically predisposed to Alzheimer's, you could have dysfunctional mitochondria in the brain uh, and good mitochondria in your muscle. But for the average person, we see multi-systemic benefits uh, to exercise uh, across mitochondria in the whole body. But yes, your VO2 at peak is almost 100, well not 100%, it'd be over 90% of that is coming from skeletal muscle.